science has developed up to an extent that we are able to predict the existence of black holes. Not just that, we are also able to predict the existence of our life with the help of uh, sending, by sending our satellites close to the orbital revolution of other planets and get information from that. But still, we are facing challenges in answering the basic questions related to our brain. The question of how are we able to store the something in our brain? How are we able to recall from our brain? And what happens once we have stored something in our brain? In order to understand this, we need to understand the basic, the basic phenomenon behind the thinking, the thought process. How the information is processed in our brain the information or the thoughts that we have travel in the form of electrical and chemical signals. This electrical and chemical signals are processed and travels with the help of neurons. Now, how does this electrical and chemical signals flow? They flow using the synapses. Synapse is the structure that permits the flow of electrical and chemical signals to flow through them. It forms a channel of communication between the two neurons to communicate. Hence, the thoughts that we have or the information that we retain in our brain travels and gets stored in the through the synapses. Now, how to understand the thought process with, with Membrister? So, let's first know what the Membrister is. Membrister is the fourth fundamental component of electronics that was postulated by Leon Chua in 1971. It is, it is a two-terminal resistive device which has the ability to store, store memory. It stores the data in the form of resistance. Now, why does this Membrister resemble synapse? Membrister Membrister actually resembles synapse because it is able to respond to the neural spikes. It is also able to store its data and is able to connect thousands of neurons together in order to communicate them. Hence, it behaves like a synapse. Now, how is the data stored and read in the Membrister? In order to re read a data, in order to write something in, in Membrister, we just need to apply some kind of specific voltage across the Membrister for a specific time interval. So the data is stored in the form of its resistance. The important thing in Membrister is the application of the applied voltage and the time interval for which the voltage is applied. Depending upon that applied voltage, the data is stored. Once the data is stored, how do we recall it? The data is recalled by applying a, a, a similar kind of voltage pulse, but now we are applying the voltage that is little less than what was previously applied. It's in millivolts, and the time interval is just for instant of time. By applying this kind of voltage pulse, we can retrieve the, the stored data back from the Membrister. Now, why, does the, why is the Membrister a non-volatile memory? As, as I've told you before, the Membrister stores anything in the form of its resistance. So whenever you store something inside the Membrister, you don't need any kind of power to retain the data. It, it stays there forever unless and until, until, until and unless you apply some other voltage pulse to it. So that's why it's, it's kind of non-volatile. It also has some self-learning behavior. When the sequence of voltage pulses are applied across the Membrister, the conductance of Membrister keeps on increasing. And it keeps on increasing unless and until we apply certain voltage pulse that is negative or that is not positive. Once we apply certain positive pulse and, and if we apply, keep on applying those sequence of negative pulses, the conductance keeps on decreasing. That is how it predicts the data. And that's why it's, it's kind of, you know, behaving more like synapse or brain that predicts the data by itself. Now, how, how does this uh, 
Mamrischa correlate correlate with our brain. In our brain, we have thoughts, and every thought is linked with feelings. Whenever we think of something, we have an a feeling that is associated with it. So every feeling is a result of a thought. But whenever we think, there is some kind of identity of that thought which stores in the form of a voltage signal. Now, comparing this voltage signal of our thought with the magnitude of applied voltage in case of Mamrischa and the time interval for which the voltage pulse was applied across Mamrischa with our feelings. We can relate this in order to understand how our thoughts are govern how our feelings are obtained so in order to in order of a to store a, some some data in memristor a voltage is applied similarly in the feelings are associated with our thoughts in order to recall those feelings in order to recall the thoughts that we already have its corresponding feeling has to be felt so I'll show you a simple experiment. I'll, I'll, you know, play some audiovisual music in order to convey my message. Right now in this room, everyone has a unique thought and a unique feeling associated with that thought. So we have written some kind of thought in our brains now. Now let's try to recall that thought. So using this, you might have realized that whatever you thought before, when I, when I showed you the picture along with the music, you had some kind of thought in, in your brain and you had some kind of feeling along with that. And on the next slide, when I just play the music, you recovered that thought, whichever you had with your feeling. So your feeling got the stimulus from your ears through the music you listen so that is how it, it it really works it's ideally our feelings who wh which help us recall our thoughts so in if if we think in a positive direction if we have positive thoughts our feelings are positive but when we have some kind of negative thoughts or when we feel negative then this technique could be used in order to get a better feeling in order to get the better thoughts and this, this thought could be stored in terms of the electrical signals in, in, in the memristor in order to, you know, get those feelings back and feel better. And this could, this could be used, you know, in, in order to uh, change our mood if we are feeling too low, too depressed, come up with, with you know, uh, some mental stress or, or some kind of uh, diseases. Uh, that's it. Thank you.